The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and today we are building a stop motion animation machine. It uses a real DSLR camera, so a professional camera with interchangeable lenses, and it's controlled with your smartphone, so you don't actually have to touch the machine and won't ruin the shot. Sounds like a good idea? Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. I would really like to make my own stop motion movie, but apparently that's not easy. When I touch the camera, I wiggle the shot, I can't get proper alignment while I have to push the buttons, and I want to get these professional shots where the camera moves actually while the action is happening. So let's build something that helps us with that. A real stop motion machine. I want to control this camera with a smartphone, so we have to find a way to interconnect these two. A single board computer could do the trick. For example, the Raspberry Pi. It can provide a web interface the cell phone can log into, so we don't even need an app. We can just log in over Wi-Fi. The camera gets controlled over the remote port. And we could also use stepper motors and stepper drivers, of course, to move the camera around. And I would like to add multi-camera support so you can shoot from different angles at the same time and use that after the fact in the edit to make your shots even more dynamic. And I would also like to make this as accessible as possible. So let's make a PCB that you could order with the files downloaded at element14.com and make your own. Let's start by drawing up the circuit in CAD. This is an overview of the schematic I've drawn up in KiCad. I've started with the template for the Raspberry Pi and this is the GPIO header that was provided in the template. So I just have to connect all the lines that I want to need. Let's start with the camera control section. These are two relays that are activated with a 3 volt signal on the coil. That's very important because the Raspberry Pi only can supply 3.3 volts logic levels and not 5 volts. If you would hook up a 5 volt device, it would either not work or could damage the Pi. So that's important. I've used the same relay in the Super 8 project, so I know that that will work. The common point is connected to the normally open output. So if it's not activated, this is not connected. If it's activated, this will connect. This relay is for the autofocus. The second relay is for the shutter. We need both because my camera requires that the autofocus is set before the shutter can activate. These are the outputs for the camera. We have two 5-pin DIN connectors. Yes, two, because this board is able to control two cameras simultaneously. We connect both of the outputs shutter and autofocus to both of these 5-pin DIN headers. I've chosen them because they are very uh, rigid. They are easy to plug in. They are like the MIDI standard. It's not using MIDI, but I like the connectors and they're easily obtainable. And I also got another one of these 5-pin DIN connectors because the power supply I've chosen that provides 5 volt and 12 volts already has a 5-pin DIN connector attached to it. So that's pretty convenient. I'd like to use the same connectors on all things, not just to confuse you and make you plug in the wrong things in the wrong connectors. In that case, I've chosen the pinout in a way that if you would connect the power to the wrong plug, this would do no harm to, to anything. All the signal lines would just be connected to ground. So nothing bad can happen there if you would mess that up. I just like to use these connectors. They are old but gold in my opinion. We also need to control stepper motors. So we have TMC2208 stepper driver modules on here. These are not the blank chips. These are the breakout boards like you would use for 3D printers. You can purchase them online and they are very convenient to use. You can also drop in other stepper driver modules, but I've only tested it so far with these ones. You can set them per UART or just with some jumpers to the desired micro steppings. This is a cap that's needed to smoothen the voltage that gets provided to the motors. 
This is where you connect the motors and these pins are broken out so you can program the device via UART and set the micro stepping in the classic way with jumpers. We need two of these because I want to do two axes, X and Y, or we could use them to move two cameras independently. This is the PCB layout for my design. I've started with a template for the Raspberry Pi A+. This would also fit on the Raspberry Pi B+, as indicated by these USB ports and the Ethernet jack. So everything fits on here. These are the positions where the TMC2208 stepper drivers will mount to. And the caps are right in the middle. These four pins are for the motor outputs and these five pin headers are for the UART connections. Then we have our DIN connectors, one for power, CAM1 and CAM2, and both the three volt relays. I've also made a slot here for the Raspberry Pi camera. I've done the traces for one side and of course also for the other one and added some silk screen. Okay, we are ready to export our design and get our boards manufactured, but wait! There are a lot of PCB design pitfalls you could fall into, so always quadruple check it and watch our video about 20 PCB design pitfalls you should avoid at all costs. This will save you a lot of trouble, trust me. So I will quadruple check that, watch my own video again, quadruple check it another time and then send my design off to Eisler.net to Germany where our beautiful boards will get manufactured. Ah, the PCB has arrived. Let's take a closer look at it. When we look at the old version that I wanted to use with the BeagleBone Black, we can see I made some PCB design errors. The new version looks much better. The pinout is correct, the spacing is correct, even these DIN connectors line up perfectly. So this time I did not trap in the PCB design pitfalls. Can't wait to assemble it. Speaking of that, don't wait. Let's assemble this thing. I have put as many orientation markings and pinout markings on the PCB as possible to make it very easy to assemble. So you won't mess up while assembling this thing. Every orientation is clearly marked, every part has its place. And if you want to make your own version, all the files you need, the Gerber files for the PCB, all the parts are available at element14.com forward slash presents. Just download that, get it made, for example at Isla, and you're ready to go. Of course, the hardware is only half the project. We need to make this functional. Let's look at the code. Welcome to the code. This is stopmotion.py. First, we have to include all the modules we need, especially the bottle module, which will provide our web server. We have to declare some variables, frames per second, interval, left or right movement, duration in seconds. This means if the clip we want to produce should be one second long in the end, we need to have 12 frames because 12 frames per second. Then we have the image count, which is basically duration times sec uh, frames per second. And we have the motor selector X or Y or X and Y. Then we have a lot of HTML, which is our web interface. So this provides us with buttons and options we can choose from that activates functions later in the code. This is one of them, the shutdown function. If you push the shutdown button, it safely shuts down the Raspberry Pi, a function that should be included in any Raspberry Pi project to avoid damage. Then we have the shutter function. This is used with the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi, number eight and 10, to connect to the relays we saw in the schematic. We have to activate the autofocus first, so we can even activate the shutter at all. The autofocus takes about two and a half seconds to properly focus, and then we can use that. If you don't want to alter your focus, you just put your camera in manual focus mode and it will ignore this command. After that, we can activate the shutter, release it again and also the autofocus and then return our HTML template with the statement manual capture, which means we have taken a photo. So we have a visual indication if the camera has done what we wanted it to do. The same for the autofocus, but this time we only activate the autofocus, not the shutter. This is the move command determined 
on which option we have selected in the interface. It will move the camera left or right for one millimeter. We have to declare all these variables, set up the pins, and then for our desired output, this is the code for moving left. This is for moving right. We always get for a range in from zero to 200 because it's 200 steps per revolution or 200 steps per millimeter in that case because the micro stepping is set to 1 16th and we use a GT2 belt. This equals 200 steps per millimeter movement in my case. Your case could be differently, so you could you have to calculate this on your own. A uh, handy tip for that, there are online calculators for 3D printers, which will do exactly that. We have to pull it down for 0.01 seconds to give the stepper driver the command. Please excuse my badly formatted code, which PyCharm just tells me I should fix. If we have done our command, it will display which command was issued. So we also have a visual indication of that. Then we have the command to set all the variables. So you can select all these variables from a drop-down list. For example, you can set the FPS to 12, 18 or 24. And you could also set the interval to different values. You can choose left or right, which motors are activated and how long the clip should be that results in the end. This accepts values from one second to 30 seconds. And it also ends with um, a visual indication of the values you have set. And now comes the centerpiece of the code, the capture function. We take all these values we have set, does the same thing like the other, sets up all the pins. Based on the values you have chosen, it sets the motors enabled accordingly, moves them left or right. And this is the core code, two for loops. The first one counts the images. So for a range from zero to the image count, the number of images we need to complete our sequence, it will take a picture. And after every picture, it will take 200 steps, which are 200 times this piece of code, to move the camera by one millimeter in the desired direction. And then it repeats that until it has enough images. When that is complete, it will return sequence finished. And of course, our HTML template. So we have the hardware, we have our PCB that's assembled, we have the code, all we need is the physical build and an enclosure. And I recently got my tiny laser cutter to work, so let's laser cut and partially 3D print an enclosure. Let's quickly cut these out with my CO2 laser, assemble it, and I also 3D printed some wheels and some stepper driver motor mounts and fixed all of that onto a piece of aluminium extrusion that I had laying around to form some kind of a dolly that I can mount my DSLR camera to. Of course, I also have to make a cable that connects the Raspberry Pi to the camera. I use a cheap remote for my camera. This is manufacturer specific, so I get a Nikon remote. You may get a Canon or whatever type of camera you have and mod that easily by just connecting the cables to the right pins on the connector, plugging it in, and now we can do our first test run. To demonstrate my project, I need a little bit of help. You come with me and we make a very, very short movie because stop motion animation takes a lot of time and it's actually the first time I'm doing this, so don't expect that much, but you will see the camera movement and a little stop motion film featuring this little fellow here. Of course, 
it's not only suitable for stop motion, but also for time lapses. So here's a little sequence of me assembling a 3D printer. So today we have made a device that makes stop motion animation a little less tedious. It is still an art form, it requires a lot of time, a lot of patience, but the interface on the smartphone is actually pretty convenient and the movement is perfectly smooth. I wouldn't be able to make moving stop motion shots without that device. If you like that, all the files are available at element14.com. You can order your PCB online, get all the components, assemble it and flash the code and it works. Let us know what you think on the community and if you have ideas for future projects we should build, share them at element14.com forward slash presents. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me and you come with me. We have more projects. <laughs>